Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the fundamental equation, a combination of the first and second laws of thermodynamics and related quantities. Recall that the first law of thermodynamics can be written in differential form as du, recall that u is the internal energy, is equal to dq, this is the change in the heat flow, plus dw, where w is the work done on the system. Recall that the heat flow dq for a reversible process can be written as TDS. And this expression is very important in the second law of thermodynamics. Also recall that the infinitesimal change in the work for a reversible process where there is only expansion work is equal to minus PdV. This suggests that we can combine the first equation and these two expressions into a general equation where du is equal to TDS minus PdV. Notice that while the expression that we used TDS is for a reversible process and the expression for DW was for a reversible process, their sum refers to the internal energy. The internal energy is a state function and it is independent of path. And this independence of path ties in because that means this is going to apply whether we have a reversible process or an irreversible process. This combined form is known to Atkins as the fundamental equation. It's sometimes called the combined equation because it incorporates information from both the first law and this expression particularly from the second law. The presence of the variable S for entropy and V for volume in this particular differential expression for the internal energy suggests that we can think of the internal energy as a function of the entropy and the volume. So with that in mind, we can write an expression for the exact differential view in terms of these two variables. So we know that we have ds and here we have dv The coefficients are the partial derivatives of the function u, the internal energy, with respect to this variable, which is the entropy. Similarly, the coefficient here has to be the partial derivative of u, we get that from there, and with respect to the volume, we know this has to be a constant entropy, and this has to be a constant volume. So again, we're exploiting the fact that when we have a state function, we can write out these kind of expressions for its exact differential. If we compare the expression that we just derived for the total differential of u with the combined law, the fundamental equation, we can immediately uh, set coefficients equal because if du is equal to du, then we know that the coefficient of ds, these coefficients have to be equal, and that the coefficients of dv have to be equal. So it tells us right away that the partial derivative of u with respect to the entropy at constant volume is equal to the temperature. This is simply by uh, setting the coefficients equal. Similarly, we have that the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to the volume at constant entropy is equal to the negative of the pressure.
Again, we get that entirely by setting the coefficients of the same variables to be equal to each other. And from that, we're able to derive values for two different expressions for important partial derivatives that we get from the fundamental equation. We recall that G, the Gibbs free energy, is a state function that is of tremendous importance in the second law. In effect, as I show in one video, the requirement that delta G be less than zero for a spontaneous process is nothing more than a restatement of the second law. Since we're combining the second law and the first law, we would like to develop more expressions for dg, hoping that we might be able to come up with interesting partial derivative identities from that expression, just as we've already done for expressions involving the internal energy u and the enthalpy h. So we're going to do the same thing now for the Gibbs free energy g. Recall that the Gibbs free energy g is defined as the enthalpy H minus T, the temperature, S, the entropy. DG, the derivative of this, DH. And now we have to apply the product rule for derivatives again. So we have minus T, D, S. So since it's a product of two functions, the uh, derivative will be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And since we have a minus sign in front, we have to make sure we carry that along. Minus S D T. So we have an expression for the differential of G. Similarly, we recall that the enthalpy was defined as U plus P times V. Similarly, we can find the derivative of h, dh here. So we have du. And since we have p times v, we have to apply the product rule. So we have the first function, which is p, times the derivative of the second, which is dv, plus the second, which is v, times the derivative of the first, which is d. Since dh occurs in the expression for dg, and we've worked out dh here, let's substitute this expression for dh into the expression for dg. So dg equals, and now we'll put the value for dh there, this is going to be du plus pdv plus vdp. Continuing, minus TDS, minus SDT. So we're trying to show by color coding where we've substituted this expression for the DH, for the enthalpy, into the expression for DG of the Gibbs free energy. We had just uh, derived two different expressions for DU. And the one that we're going to use here is TDS minus PDV, which is our fundamental equation. Let's substitute this expression for DU into the expression for DG here. So we get that DG is equal to DU, which is TDS. minus PDV, plus PDV, plus VDP, and then minus TDS, minus SDT, where I've deliberately color-coded in this expression so you can see where we substituted expressions for du and or dh into the expression for dg. And 
we notice that minus PDV and plus PDV will cancel. We have TDS and minus TDS. So we're left with a stripped down expression for the Gibbs free energy here. We have that it's equal to VDP minus SDT. The form of this expression suggests that it might be useful to think of the Gibbs free energy as a function of the two variables, pressure and temperature. That suggests that we write an expression for the exact differential of the Gibbs free energy in terms of the pressure and the temperature. And call, we do this as standard, since the Gibbs free energy is a state function, so we have the partial derivative of G with respect to the pressure. That's the first coefficient. And now we need the Gibbs free energy with respect to the temperature. This is under constant temperature. This is under constant pressure. Again, we have two different expressions for delta G, for dG, in terms of the same two variables, dP and dT, which tells us that the coefficients of dP and dT have to be equal. So that tells us that the partial derivative of G with respect to P at constant temperature, so that's this particular coefficient, has to be equal to this coefficient, which is simply the volume. So here we have a thermodynamic definition in terms of partial derivatives of the volume. Similarly, we notice that the coefficient of dt in each of these cases, they must be equal. So that tells us that the partial derivative of g with respect to the temperature at constant pressure is equal to minus s, the negative of the entropy. So again, we see that by using the fact that a state function can be written in this particular way in terms of partial derivatives if we can develop multiple expressions for that partial derivative in terms of the same variables then we do the trick of equating the coefficients and in the process we are able to derive a large number of interesting thermodynamic relationships. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.